at a variety of factors to see how countries around the world are doing. We evaluate laws in 188 countries. We see how they're doing with respect to victim protection measures. We look at prosecutions and convictions, um, at prevention efforts, and at, at protection efforts. And across those standards, um, the report decides that, and the analysts that work on the report, along with individuals here at the embassy in Kuala Lumpur, um, evaluate all those factors and this year, Malaysia was adjudged to not be making, um, to be making significant efforts, but not to have increasing efforts. And that places them on the tier two watch list. Well, the training for trafficking involves looking at the indicators. Um, for labor trafficking or sexual trafficking, you look at whether people hold their travel documents. You look at whether they are free to go and whether they keep a fair share of their earnings. All of these things are indicators. I used to talk to American juries about freedom of movement. It's very important that you're able to leave an exploitive work situation, and if you are held there by force, fraud, or coercion, then that is trafficking. Well, that's, the report actually talks about Malaysia being a destination and a transit country, that because of its geographic location and its economic success, people want to come here to work or want to come here um, to move on to other countries to work. And so certainly if there are known places where people are smuggled in or brought in illegally, then law enforcement needs to um, pursue those areas as places where they may find trafficking victims. We make it too costly for them to do business that way, right? I mean, they're making money off of people, and we need to have a price and a consequence for their deplorable behavior. And so what we do is we prosecute them, and we jail them, and we take away any financial benefit they may have gained from trafficking. We also um, bring in the public and let the public know that this crime does exist and that we need to have the public be on the lookout and be aware of it as well. There are also problems all over the world with domestic servitude, which is bringing someone into your home and um, not paying them appropriately, requiring them to work too many hours, um, abusing them. And I prosecuted some of those domestic servitude cases in the U.S., and they are very challenging to find. So we need the public to care about their, their fellow human beings, and we need to uh, make this a public issue. If you think about it, most victims of crime go to the police to report what happened to them. Trafficking victims are just the opposite. They're told not to speak to police or they'll be locked up or deported. They're told not to speak to police because they won't be believed. Sometimes they are threatened or their families are threatened. So one of the things we do is really encourage law enforcement to look at trafficking crimes in a different way, to be very proactive and to um, try to understand the signs and indicators of trafficking to determine whether a potential uh, person is in fact a trafficking victim. So the report talks about training law enforcement, including prosecutors and police and immigration officials, talks about how the judges need to be trained on the laws in every country. So that's one of our key recommendations. And the goal of that training is to increase successful prosecutions and convictions. Another part of the report looks at victim protection measures. It's very important that trafficking victims are not criminalized or penalized for crimes they may have committed, but as a result of being trafficked. So if you think about it, it's like they don't do this willingly. They may commit this immigration violation or prostitution violation, but it's not of their own volition. It's because someone is forcing them to do it. And so it's very important that victims have freedom of movement, that they not be locked up um, pending trial or pending deportation. In fact, even if they come to a country illegally, they shouldn't be criminalized for that. So year-round, we're gathering information, we're sharing best practices, we're funding trainings and other non-governmental organizations. 
who work with victims. So that's a year-round effort. Now personal to me coming on board, as I mentioned, the, the non-criminalization of victims was very important. And I've talked about that with every government that I have uh, traveled to meet with. I've talked about that at home with um, the attorneys general of all, all of the U.S. 50 states. This is a very important um, point. I've also talked about labor trafficking because it is um, sometimes harder to find than sex trafficking cases and harder for law enforcement and judges to understand. So every case that I prosecuted, I was helping someone move on with their life. I was helping a victim regain their life. I was helping hold um, the criminal perpetrator accountable. So that was very meaningful work to me. I used to say I was working on the side of the angels and I found it very rewarding and fulfilling. And now getting to talk to governments about my experience. Um, every country that has trafficking has these same kind of growing pains and learning how to investigate and prosecute these cases successfully. So if I can share international best practices, I feel like I'm still making a positive difference for trafficking victims.